Welcome back. Week four of world history. Time's going by pretty quick, getting used to uh, this new normal that we have. Um, however, it's, it's week four of lessons. However, this is week six that we've been out of school. It seems, I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's a month and a half that we haven't um, seen each other. So we had, you know, the, the week, um, the first week we were out right before spring break, then we had spring break and then four weeks of lessons. So this is going on the sixth week. Crazy. But this week, we're going to talk, talk about the past, basically two weeks, we've talked about the Cold War, right? The formation of it, how it was spreading last week, and the proxy wars throughout the entire world, Latin America, South America, uh, Latin America, and in um, uh, Southeast Asia. Cuba. Now we're talking about, we're going to talk about the end of the Cold War. Um, and this has a lot of, of key events. Pretty interesting. I took, I think, two or three, two, two um, courses, a whole year uh, worth of, of college courses on this part of history. I had a professor that lived in, in Poland, which we'll talk about today. Um, and, and researched this, this, uh, this stuff a lot. He was actually there um, during uh, when all this was happening. So it was pretty cool to learn about that firsthand. So I'll share some of that, that knowledge today. I'm gonna jump right to it, share my screen, and we will get on with this lesson. All right, drop that down to the bottom, then I will get over to Cold War Ends. All right, so your objective, you will be able to describe in your words, preferably, the end of the Cold War and the collapse of communism in the late 1900s. 1991 is the key year that the Soviet Union and all of the satellite states that we talked about last week fell. Just a little a table of contents, a little intro video. Um, your little warm-up activity, which I encourage everybody to do every week, get your brain working and get your brain focused on history and not math or science or something like that. I'm going to go fairly quick through this, a big summary, because these videos are limited as, as to long, how long I can um, upload, the, how, they can only be so long, all right? So this is a... Um, as always, we start off with a timeline that chronicles key events we'll talk about throughout the lesson. Um, this goes from really the, the mid-1950s all the way up until um, the collapse in 1991. All right, so click through that, a lot of key events. Um, so this basically just says, you know, remember the Iron Curtain is all of these states um, or I'm not states, or they were Soviet states, but countries, um, European countries under S Soviet or Russian control. You had Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, all of those um, modern day countries, East Germany were controlled um, or ruled by Russia or the Soviet Union. Um, this is just really talking about two of the major issues that, um, brought about really just were the base level that always that always did cause problems for the Soviets and ultimately um, created the fall of the Soviet Union. Um, well, actually, I believe this, well, we'll talk about both. First off, their economy was crappy. They didn't accept any of the help that the United States um, under the Marshall Plan provided after World War II, which I talked about. So many of the, um, the economies in Eastern Europe never recovered. They, I mean, they're still in bad shape today, and that is 70 some years after World War II. Um, the Soviet Union could not effectively run a, a, a government or an economy, um, and that was a major reason. People were fed up and they wanted a better life. They saw in, in brief little pieces what people in America and in the West had, and they wanted that for themselves. So that motivated people to rebel. Um, also was um, shortage, shortages of go goods were huge. Uh, food in particular was, was always um, was limited because the government couldn't control, because the government controlled the growing of all food, they couldn't run that properly. 
Um, so that was a big issue that, you know, if people don't have food, they're going to get mad and they're going to rebel. We're seeing that now going on with toilet paper. Um, and a good example of just how bad the economy and, and uh, was in, in, so, in the Soviet Union was um, in East Germany, uh, they made a car called the Trabant. It was, you've never heard of it for, for good reason. Uh, the car was highly inefficient because of the low quality materials used to manufacture it. Right? It was fragile and it also polluted the air. It was a terrible car. All right. So, on the other hand, right across the wall in West Germany, Volkswagen was making the Volkswagen Beetle, which is still on the road today, one of the most iconic cars in history. So, that right there, just, just the concrete wall separated the worst car in history and the best car in history. So, that basically shows you Soviet Union, worst empire in history and democracy in the west the best in history all right so that is a tale of two basically civilizations um so uh, the kind of communism it really um you could really say started after the fall of the after the cuban missile crisis went um negatively for the soviet union that was really the, the you could say the the start of of the snowball rolling down the hill. I, I think I think it's a good analogy to use a, the snowball effect for the fall of the com, the, the, the Soviet Union because you know when you roll a snowball in the snow, the, the farther you roll it, the bigger it gets. The more you know, let's say, the more issues the Soviet Union was having. So the law, as time went on, the Soviet Union's problems got bigger, 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 to a point that they couldn't do anything about it. They tried and they could not. It was too, simply too late. So all this really started in, 19, uh, in the 1950s and early 1948, so even before the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, um, the Yugoslav leader Tito, as I know him as for my classes, um, did not like Joseph Stalin and kind of rebelled against him. That was put down and no, nothing um, happened. 1956, we saw some some riots happening in Poland, which is going to be a hotbed of, of protest. Uh, but that was shut down eventually and nothing happened. Hungary also uh, had some revolutions early on, but nothing um, ultimately happened um, before in those because early on the Soviet Union did have enough power to shut down revolutions. But as it got into the 1970s, 1980s, and, and in 1990, the Soviet Union did not have the power or the resources to put down any of these um, rebellions. So like I said, as time goes on, it gets worse and worse, worse and worse. <laughs> Um, so basically, um, in 1961, the Berlin Wall was put up. Many of you have probably heard about John F. Kennedy's speech at the Berlin Wall in 1961. He gave his um, Ike bin, uh, what is it? Ike bin Ein Berliner, which basically says, I am a Berliner. Uh, I am from Berlin, basically saying that uh, conditions were tough in Berlin, but everybody in the free world um, was a citizen of the city of Berlin and, and with those people, with those individuals. Um, so um, as people in the East, in Soviet, Soviet controlled East Germany saw things getting worse, they were quickly just going over into West Germany because in the beginning there was no barrier between the two. West Germany was better because uh, Americans and English and uh, Western societies, Western free de democratic societies were there. Um, the Russians and other Eastern Europeans wanted to, to go there because there's a better way of life. So in the beginning, they could easily do that. Soviet Union then put up the Berlin Wall in 1961 to stop free travel across that border. Once again, only making their issues worse. 1968, Pope John Paul II, or oh, not, not, that wasn't, he was 1978, my bad, I misread. Um, so Czechoslovakia, um, they um, began kind of low-key rebellion, making some changes um, in 1968, but the Soviet Union literally invaded them and undid the reforms. So like I said, in the early days, they had enough power to do this. That's going to change. 1978, Pope John Paul II, right, the Pope of the Catholic Church, one of the biggest rela uh, religions in the world, billions of followers, um, 
came into power. He was from Poland, which at that time, Poland was controlled by the Soviet Union. That gave um, the Polish people more reason to, to um, rebel um, and, and fight for freedom because the Pope was advocating for that. That is, is, is something within that religion, you know, having freedom and, and, and equal rights and all, all of things like that. So the Pope really helped out being that he was from Poland. Um, so we're, now we're gonna start talking about um, the fall of the communist bloc. The communist bloc are, is just a block of countries like Poland and Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, Hungary, all of those countries that were controlled by Russia. So really 1980 started the downfall and the separation of all of these. Um, you had a terrible economy, food shortages, and a failing war in Afghanistan that led to the, the Russian government not having any resources to stop these rebellions. They didn't have money. Um, really, they, they were just, they were swamped by debt. Uh, public opinion was against them and their, their military was proving to be ineffective. So they really had nothing to stand on. They were standing flat footed. Poland is going to be the hotbed. Um, Lech, Lech Walesa, uh, right here, he was the, he's still alive, he's 72 years old. He was the Polish, um, basically the biggest leader of the Polish um, liberation movement. My professor, I learned a lot about this guy. Um, and today, a lot of people are actually, they believe he was a little bit corrupt. He still fought for their independence, but today people think he was kind of um, getting paid and getting some money, money under the table, which people don't like. Um, Poland was making a lot of, of track. They were trying to make changes. Um, Lech Walesa was, he was an electrician and he headed, headed a popular protest organization called Solidarity. This group consists of, of a number of small labor unions, okay? Um, and he became known worldwide. Um, he was, he's still a worldwide figure. Um, so eventually, the Polish government put an end to solidarity. They, they, you know, they, they declared martial law. Said you couldn't, you couldn't leave your homes. You had to do what the government and the military said. Solidarity could meet, um, but after um, public, um, public, uh, I say pressure, uh, Mulesa was released within a year from from jail, and um, a lot of these martial law was eventually lifted. In lifting martial law, the Pope had a big had a big uh, role in that. He uh, urged Valesa to negotiate, basically, with the communist government um, to get that stopped. And because of his actions in 1983, Valesa won the Nobel Peace Prize for negotiating the end to that martial law. Um, this video basically is showing um, this um, basically public support for Valesa and Solidarity across um, the world, really. You had Ottawa, Canada. Uh, I, this is somewhere in Asia. Uh, in, I think here, England was back here. If I see London right here. So um, it's really, really stoked the fires um, within people across the world that, look, the Soviet Union is not the good guy here. Um, Lake Valesa, Solidarity, the Polish people, all of the people under Soviet rule needed to gain their freedom. This is a picture of Valesa on slide 19, um, had a huge mustache uh, at the time. Um, so 1988, Poland's economy worsened. Um, 1989, the government lifted the ban on solidarity and made its meetings legal again. And then, basically, in 19, the, in, by that time, 1989, the Soviets could not stop this revolution. 1990, uh, Poland was now free, and Valesa won the first free presidential election within Poland. He served until 1995 as president. Um, and they started to transition to a free market nation, didn't go completely smooth for them, but they are better now than they were back then. All right, so basically, why do you think people all over the world showed such strong support for solidarity, like Valesa, the Polish um, anti-communist movement? You know, you could talk about right free uh, all of our personal rights that we should have, um, our, our personal freedoms, or you could talk about 
um, communists in general, uh, uh, communism in general, how, and how that isn't a very good system to run a country. Um, so was also the decline, it's Czechoslovakia in 1989, student protests, um, you had up to 500,000 students demonstrating in the city of Prague, um, and that eventually in 1990, uh, 1989 actually, so almost 1990, December, uh, Václav Havel, or Václav Havel um, became a pre the president, right? And the revolution in Czechoslovakia, some of you might have heard of it called, or heard it, heard the, the, the terms Velvet Revolution. Velvet Revolution, if you've ever felt velvet, velvet is very smooth. It's called the Velvet Revolution because power was transferred in this situation very smoothly. There weren't, um, no one was murdered or a big war didn't happen. It was a very smooth transition of power. That's why it's called the Velvet Revolution. Oops, what happened there? Um, so the satellite states, remember, those are states that depended on the Soviet Union for support, um, really kept falling, falling, falling. Um, and uh, the big year was 1989. Um, more people were fleeing East Germany, finding a way through Hungary to get into West Germany. Um, and um, that, that was, that started basically a, a, a bleeding wound that the Soviet Union could not stop the bleeding on. People were leaving their, their country. So this goes through um, Romania. Um, Sesso was kicked out. He was a notorious, really bad guy. Um, so bad, the armed forces um, arrested, tried, and just took him out back and shot him, just, to, just executed him, right? There was no, like, Today they use use drugs and humane measures. They just shot this guy and his wife behind the the, the court. Um, not not a great guy. Um, so all by 1991, all of these satellite states: so Czechoslovakia, um, East Germany, uh, Romania, Hungary, uh, Bulgaria, all of those, Poland. They were all um, independent now. They they'd broken their ties with with Russia. Uh, the Warsaw Pact, which we talked about last week, was gone. Um, that was the end for the Soviet Union. So the reunification in Germany, we'll talk about a little bit later, 1991. Um, we talk, I've already talked about this, 1961, the Soviets built the, the Berlin Wall to um, stop people from leaving East Germany into West Germany, or East Berlin into West Berlin. Um, this video is a great video, very short. Watch it, please. It's, it's J, um, not JFK's, but Ronald Reagan's famous address at um, slide 26 here, um, at the Berlin Wall, where he um, encourages Mikhail Gorbachev, which is, uh, he was the, Gorbachev was the leader of the Soviet Union when it collapsed, to tear down the Berlin Wall open the gates, tear down, tear it down to re reunite East and West Germany, East and West Berlin. So 1989, all right, basically East German leaders knew they could not hold out much, lo much longer. They basically opened the gates into West Germany and West Berlin and reunited the country. Also Hungary allowed people to get into West Germany as well. Um, as people went through the wall, you can see this individual right here on slide 27 is, has a hammer and he's hammering chunks of the wall. The people literally destroyed the wall with their hands almost. Right? So they, I mean, people have those still today. You can find souvenirs of pieces of the Berlin Wall that people have, right? So it was just ripped down by the people because it, it, it held them down in oppression for so many years. This really was in many ways the, the final straw. So the East and West, the Soviet Union, the United States and Germany um, reunited Germany uh, in its entirety on October 3rd, 1990, all right? And Helmut Kohl right here, weird name I know, but that is a, is a German name. Um, weird name for us in America, it's not an American, um, common American name. Um, he became the first, um, Chancellor of Germany and Germany because they moved to a democratic um, system, right? They became a democratic nation and not a communist nation. They today have one of them, or they are the most, or they are one of the most powerful countries, and they have one of the most powerful economies in the world. So they went from the bottom to the top. 
just because they're reunited and 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 and, and favored democratic um, tendencies. To the end of the Soviet Union, like I've said before, the economy was terrible, food shortages, and the ongoing war with Afga in Afghanistan led to their um, downfall. So 1979. Uh, Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Their, the Afghanistan for the Soviets was basically Vietnam for the Americans. Um, they should, we, both of us should have never went there. They spent billions of dollars they did not have, um, put them in debt they could never get out of. That led to food issues and other economic issues that really, like I said, that snowball effect just kept building on issues that they could not get out of in 1991. All right, so terrible idea to go and get into. And if you ever watch Rambo 3, Rambo 3 takes place in Afghanistan. John Rambo goes to a Soviet prison camp to free a uh, his general, his previous general um, in Afghanistan. Good movie, watch it. Um, all right, so Gorbachev, Gorbachev, Mikhail Gorbachev, which I previously um, mentioned, he served as the leader of the Soviet Union from 1985 to 1991. He was the last leader of the Soviet Union. Um, so Gorbachev wanted to restructure things to maybe save the Soviet Union. He, his first idea was perestroika on slide 35. Um, perestroika, number one, it, it wanted more democratic free kind of elections because the soviets none of their elections still today in russia they're not they're not uh free they're rigged they're corrupt um that's why putin is still the president uh, he's been president for 20 some years now um and they wanted to the, the perestroika also loosened its grip over the economy so basically this the soviet government didn't control the economy completely and allowed individuals to start private businesses and make more money so basically he wanted to help the people out a little bit throw them a bone and maybe they wouldn't rebel didn't work second glasnost um glasnost uh the first part of it a transparency in the government basically transparency means you can see through um, this was meant to allow people to um, see everything the government was doing to, to limit corruption. Soviet government was super corrupt. You know, people get paid money to do things, um, you know, assassinations, all kinds of stuff. The KGB was assassinating people. It was really bad. Um, our government in America prides itself on transparency, right? Um, but Soviets and still Russians today don't have a lot of transparency. Um, this also encouraged freedom of expression of the people in the media. Um, instead of the people supporting the country, they criticized the country even more. Media criticized the country, and this turned out to be a complete disaster. Uh, public relations nightmare for uh, Gorbachev. Food issues, once again, rear their ugly head. And slide 37. Huge economic and food issues. All, and then by this slide, we've, which we've already talked about, all those Soviet satellite states were now gone. 1991, on actually in December 25th, 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. It was done. That was the end of the Soviet Union um, as we'd, we'd known it for 50, 50 years. It officially ended the Cold War. Night, December 25th, Christmas Day, 1990. One, the Cold War ended. This is a little video about how music has bridged the gap um, between, um, you don't have to do this activity here, okay? Um, unless you want to. If you, if you like music and analyzing that in history, feel free to do that. Um, I'd like to see your answers, but you do not have to do that, that activity. All right, and that's it. Get your little stamp of completion there. I'm going to stop my screen share real quick. All right, so I hope that, I, mean, I kind of went through that kind of quick, but um, this video is already kind of long with me summarizing, summarizing everything, and um, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's major issues, uh, economic issues, food shortages, and the uh, uh, debt and the war in Afghanistan led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, because the people had nothing, they had no food, they didn't have money, they had bad, bad consumer goods, they wanted a better way of life, and that, that wasn't under communism. It was under um, democratic governments like we have here in the United States. 
So that is why the Soviet Union ultimately collapsed. Uh, that snowball effect. All right, so if you have any questions, please feel free, reach out to me over email, um, message me on Play-Doh. I'm pretty quick with both of those during the week and even on the weekends, um, but on the weekends, the uh, study island, I, I not study island, but Play-Doh, I don't, um, I, I sometimes don't respond as much because I don't check it as often, but my email always goes to my phone and I, I'm pretty quick on it. I, I will get back to you very, very quick, most likely. So. Email me if you have questions, check my website if you have questions, watch these videos, keep watching them if you have any questions. Let's have a great fourth week of lessons. I will see you next week for week five, people.